Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of the Disney Resorts Podcast. My name's Kenny Hayes and I am joined alongside as always by the one, the only, Walt Ramirez. Hey everybody, how's it going? So in this week's episode, Walter and I decided we are not, we're just, not just doing one, but we're going to do two dining reviews. Our first is going to be our recent experience over at the Flying Fish, located at Disney's Boardwalk Resort. Our second review this evening will be our Beaches and Cream review. Uh, yes, we did get the kitchen sink, and there's a video coming up shortly. We will then discuss our top five picks for Walt Disney World DVC resorts, and we'll wrap up with what we currently miss at Walt Disney World. So, Walt, uh, you want to lead the charge with our Flying Fish review? Sure. Uh, so we we both dined at the Flying Fish on our recent trip. Uh, and, uh, this was the first time for me. I think this was your first time at flying fish. As this well? was my, this was my second at first since the pandemic. Yep. Second. Okay. Okay. So this was my first, I've never dined there before. Uh, and I waited until obviously they reopened the restaurant. Uh, we had, uh, I started out with the lobster bisque. Uh, and, uh, had a, uh, that was $16. I had a slow roasted pork belly, uh, which was excellent. Uh, and that was also 16 as an appetizer. Uh, and I, uh, asked the, uh, the waiter for a suggestion for an entree. And he mentioned the seafood pearl pasta, which, uh, was, was pretty good. Uh, it was 55. Uh, that came with uh, shrimp, lobster, clams, mussels, and scallops. Um, and uh, overall, I thought it was good. It wasn't uh, the best seafood pasta I've ever had. Uh, it was a unique presentation. It was a little bit different than normally you would you would see it. I agree. Uh, and when you see the video, uh, you'll you'll notice that. Uh, and Ken, you had the filet mignon. Is that, that correct? That was correct. That was my. Um... That was my entree. Um, and I also started off with the pork belly as well for the appetizer. I I got to okay. say the the pork belly was very good. If you like the bacon and eggs over at, um, which is now Steakhouse 71, it's kind of on the lines as that. But if, you're, if your taste buds want something like that, definitely go to Steakhouse 71. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot better. It, it was good here at Flying Fish, but if you're looking for that type of appetizer, definitely go to Steakhouse 71. Um, I had the filet, like you said. Filet was average. I was I was disappointed because the first and only other time we ate there was pre-COVID, and we had a really good seat. They put us right up against the where the chefs are, and it was a great time. You have a good interaction, and you literally watch the chef prepare your food, cook it, um, the only downside of that is it gets very hot. So my wife wasn't really happy with that, you know, kind of building up a sweat as you're you know, dressed up to go out to a nice dinner. But um, the first time I ate there, I thought it was excellent. Very good. Um, this was a little disappointing to me the second time around. Um, definitely not the best filet I've had on property. And I think you said it in our last episode, Walt, with the California Grill, it wouldn't fall in my top three. Well, this would definitely not fall in my top three. Was it terrible? Okay. No, it wasn't terrible, it, but it was average. But I mean, for what I expect at Disney, especially at these these top restaurants and, and the boardwalk for, um, sorry, the boardwalk, the flying fish for, you know, how renowned it is there. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I understand it only recently reopened, so... But I will definitely go back. I will try it again. But all in all, it, it was average to me. Okay. And your wife had the uh, salmon. Yeah, I she believe. said it wasn't bad. And that was yeah, 48. It was 48. Uh, she liked it. Wasn't bad at all. Um, again, I don't think it really knocked anybody's socks off there. Um, so uh, I will give it another shot because I had such a good mm -hmm. meal the first time around. And with them just recently reopening when we were there, 
um, you know, maybe they still got to work some of the bugs out, get the kinks back out. But, um, yeah, average at best. Okay, so on a uh, on a scale of uh, one to five, uh, I would give my meal uh, a three and a half, maybe even a four. Um, it wasn't, um, but I agree with you. It, it, it wasn't something that I would say I definitely have to go back for. Uh, my lobster bisque was very good, but again, it's lobster yeah. bisque. You could get that pretty much anywhere. Uh, and the pork belly, I agree with you. It wasn't in the same level as you would get at Steakhouse 71. It was a little mm-hmm. dry. Could have just been, you know, the chef having a bad night uh, or our, our luck. Uh, but the um, the seafood pearl pasta was unique. There was a lot of seafood, but it wasn't something that – it wasn't a dish that I would suggest for you to have if you went back. Um, I would definitely try something else. But overall, I, I mean, the meal itself, I would say between a three and a half and a four is what I would give it. Um, so let me you? ask you this real quick before I give my rating. Since, uh, since I've eaten there before, sure. you know, uh, I'm willing to give it another shot. And you've heard me talk about it over the years of how much I liked, I enjoyed flying fish. So since this was your first ch- uh, chance at eating there, if you never knew how good that I said it was in the past, walking out of there last, would you even consider going mm-hmm. back? Uh, great question. I probably would say not mm-hmm. right away. Uh, if it was, um, if I was having a difficult time getting a dinner reservation in some of my other favorite places, I would definitely try that again, try the flying fish again. But you're right; I probably wouldn't put that at the top of the list. About you know, as far as going back for a second shot at it, uh, and and that's where I was curious because I'm sitting here thinking if someone's going in there first shot and and, and this is what you got, it, you may not go back. Because, like I said, in my opinion, yeah. and I think you and I agree, it was average at best. Um, the one thing I'll say is I think the, the cost of the meal itself was was mm-hmm. average. It wasn't an overly expensive uh, dining experience um, by Disney standards. So, I mean, some of the other the restaurant reviews we've done where we, you know, we did the California Grill where um, it's a prefix menu. Uh, and some other places that we'll do in the future are definitely a little pricier than the flying mm-hmm. fish. So I will say from that standpoint, it, it it deserves a second chance because you didn't walk out of there saying, wow, I, I, I got fleeced on the amount of money I spent. Um, but But I agree with you. I think that if that was your first experience, you may not go mm-hmm. back a second time. I mean, I, I I understand where you would come from from that standpoint. So let me ask you this real quick. So we'll, we'll change the scoring because I know originally we started off between a one through five in our original shows. Grand, uh, Grand, I almost did it, you all. I almost called it Grand Floridian to California Grill. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's, it's contagious. It's catching on. So we did a one through ten for California Grill, and I believe we both gave it mm-hmm. a six and a half. So let's let let's keep it through a one through ten. Uh, so what do you give it that okay. between a one through 10? Uh, probably about the same, a six okay. and a half, you know, between a six and okay. a six and a half. I, I wouldn't go much higher than that. I, I agree. I would go with a six. Um, like I said, I just, I was, nothing knocks my socks off. Service was good. Um, mm-hmm. like I said, I, I don't think we had bad service anywhere. I, I know we didn't always eat together. But anywhere I went, the service was great. But like I said, in regards to my meal, average at best, so I'll give it a six. I agree. Um, now, did you have a conversation? Was this the restaurant that you had a conversation with yes, the waiter? So, or am I missing, no, messing no, this no, up you again? Got the right, you got the right restaurant this time. So when we finished okay. our meal that night, Walter and, and I and our family was walking out, and I stopped to take a picture if – you've ever been into flying fish before, if you look up, they have glass fishes hanging from the ceiling. So I turned around and I just started to take a couple pictures of it. And one of the waiters stopped and he said to me, hey, here's a little tidbit for you. 
do you know how long it takes Disney to clean them? And I was thinking to myself, like, I never even thought of that. Well, (laughs) so I was like, "Yeah, yeah, how do they clean them? It takes an entire week to clean every one of those from start to finish. Now, I don't know if a week is either five or seven days, but either or between five or seven days, that that's a lot because there's a lot of them up there. That's a long time. That was pretty cool. Yeah, There are a lot of fish up there. That was pretty cool. That was, it was something interesting. So, yeah, I mean, overall the atmosphere of the restaurant I thought was, was pretty good. Also. I agree. I, I, I really enjoy the inside. I think it's got a good ambiance. Uh, I liked the decor. I think it's very elegant. Um, But like I said, that's why I was a little disappointed because I was actually happy when we were able to get the dining reservations with all of us because you two never ate there before. So I was really happy to show Mm -hmm. you like, hey, well, here's a new restaurant. Check this place out. It's good. So we'll we'll have to give it one more shot. Absolutely. So you want to take us over to Beaches and Cream now? Oh, actually, you know what? You want want, to pull Uh, up that video. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead and pull up the video of the uh, Yeah, so everybody watching fish. over on YouTube, we're going to play a short overview of the flying fish. There we are. And on that video, you had a chance to see at the very end or near the end, those fish that Ken was talking about. Yeah. And there's a lot of them. So I I don't envy he or she, (laughs) whoever's duties and responsibilities are for cleaning that. uh, Good job. Cause I'll pass. (laughs) (laughs) So we, uh, we, we made our way over to beaches and cream. Uh, for it was uh, my wife's 50th birthday and we decided to go over there and for the first time try getting the kitchen mm-hmm. sink now we've uh, been in beaches and cream before but never as a group so we finally had enough people to give the kitchen sink a try and uh, it lived up to its reputation absolutely absolutely um, but but I, w- I will say this. It was a lot of fun. It was a great experience. Um, they make a big production about bringing it out. Uh, it seems like it happened quite mm-hmm. often that night. A lot of people were getting the kitchen sink. Uh, it's a 30, the cost is $35. Uh, and it, ser- it says it serves four. I can tell you that it serves a lot more than four because um, there were four of us and we five. have actually five of us. And we had a hard time uh, even putting a dent in it. I mean, we put a pretty good dent in it, but it was uh, there was still a lot left. Yes, there was. Uh, at the end. So it could have actually served probably at least two more people without any issue. Um, again, it was, it was a lot of fun. It, and I look at it this way. If you're going to go there with a group of people, uh, it's actually not a bad value because – uh, two scoop Sunday is around ten to twelve dollars. Mm-hmm. So if you have five people, you're over fifty bucks. I mean, this is thirty five, and you're getting basically everything under the sun. You're getting banana, you're getting cake in there. I, there's candy, there's all kinds of toppings. Uh, I mean, we were finding things that we didn't even know were in there. <laughs> so, it was so, like a treasure hunt. Um, it was a treasure hunt. It was fun. Uh, so I would suggest that if you have a group of people and you feel like you're, you're going to be able to at least, um, even if you don't put a dent in it, I mean, for the $35, it's worth it. So, yeah, well, I think because uh, with all of which, us, it was, so it was $35 for the uh, kitchen sink. And I think we had a couple of drinks, a couple of sodas and a coffee. So what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. $45 for five people for a night out for dessert in Disney? I, I Like you said, it's, yeah. a, it's a total bargain. We were very fortunate. Um, and if you know that Disney just recently, when we went, brought back 
you know, we're allowing the kitchen sink process, the singing and the dance and the, and the lights going off to come back due to the pandemic. So I was super excited um, because in the past, when I went there, I was never fortunate. I don't know why. Like you said, a lot of people that night got the kitchen sink. And I think a lot of it had to do with, you know, the built up, the pent up demand over the last two years because I never seen it before go off. So I was excited for us to go through it. And then I'm going to say, because we videotaped a few of them, there was four to five other families while we were there before us that got the kitchen sink. Mm -hmm, yeah, so least. we got the whole experience, not just our family, but watching everyone else. And, uh, of course, when we play the video shortly, you're going to hear me because, you know, when they scream out, you know, the whole can. Well, yeah, you can hear me. Yes, I was I was jacked up. <laughs> the whole can. <laughs> 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 you were excited. Yes, you were. But, uh, but rightfully yeah, so. I, you know what? Well, we, we had some elegant dinners there, some fancy dinners, some very good dinners. Um, that was my favorite place to go because it was – everything was good. Okay, it was the ice cream. But like you said, it was a huge thing of ice cream. It's something you don't do every day. Um, it, it's something you might do once a year if you're people like us who go to Disney right. often. But it's it's something unique and different that you don't get anywhere else. And like I said in other episodes, it feels good to have the normal Disney back after the last couple of years. And uh, I had a blast. And every time someone ordered it, I sang along with them. So guilty as charged. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know what it is, too? If you have kids and you're there with a, with a, a group or a family, it makes sense because it's a lot of fun for the mm -hmm. kids. And you can choose the different flavors of ice cream that you want. Um, and it just, it, it's one of those things, like you said, it's, it's an experience, but it's a nice like yes. family event, you know, to do. And, and it's really not that expensive for, for as much as everything in Disney now costs and how they, gouge you on every nickel and dime mm -hmm. they can this is one of those things uh, now we're saying that and they'll probably raise yeah, the price exactly. on this thing in the next like, exactly. couple of weeks but but uh but um but you know at 35 dollars, like i said it's a great deal because if you go anywhere else for ice cream if you've been to giardelli's mm -hmm. in uh in disney springs and you're paying 14 15 dollars sometimes for a sunday depending on how many toppings you get on it uh you know if you're with four or five people, it adds, it, it adds up quickly. And like with this, the amount of variety you have, everybody's going to be happy. Everybody's going to get something that they want out of it. And and the the pre the, the show that they put on beforehand is is yeah, a lot it's really of fun. cool. So here's so, another another a quick um, fact. And Walter, I almost forgot about this mm -hmm. one. And our server, she she was great. She was awesome. Um, she so was I phenomenal, asked her yeah. towards the end. I was like. And can I can I buy the kitchen sink? Like, how do I take this home with me? And uh, she's like, No, we don't sell them. She's like, They're actually, you know, they're they're waiting for more. Like the rest of the country, everything's on back order. So it costs eighty five dollars a piece for those kitchen sinks. So just a little, I yeah. Like, All right, I guess I'm not taking this out of here. <laughs> <laughs> now you could get the little yeah. plastic one that you can mm -hmm. take home. That looks like Mickey yeah, and Minnie. but I wanted the real know, deal. But you wanted the real <laughs> I don't real know one. how I would have got a home, Walt, because I said to you, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get this in the luggage anyway, even if I could buy it. <laughs> yeah, you'd have to UPS at home. But, yeah, I, I, if, if you're going to be going, you know, anytime soon to Walt Disney World, absolutely, whether it's it's a couple, friends, uh, you got children, a family going down there, definitely try it and definitely splurge, take the $35 and get the kitchen sink you know get the whole atmosphere we promise you we won't steer you wrong you'll 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 have a great time absolutely and so on a scale you want to do one to five or one to ten on this uh, let's do a one through ten we'll, we'll we'll keep we'll keep the consistency okay so we're, we're rating him on so the your, ice cream your... part of it because i know we've talked about the food in the past so i am going to rate the yeah this is just the, just, just the, the ice, ice cream, cream. so yeah. for beaches and cream review Dessert only. Uh, I'm going to go eight and a half. Okay. 
I'm going to, I'm going to up your one and I'm going right. to go a nine. I, I, on I, I thought about it. Be, uh, yeah. I, I just, I just think that it's, it's just a lot of fun. Great, a great time. Uh, and you can't go wrong with the quality and the quantity of the ice cream that you're getting with the kitchen sink. Uh, but like you said, this is just strictly on a dessert slash yes. ice cream kitchen sink review mm-hmm. uh, and not the food. But uh, and also, as we mentioned, um, our, our waitress was outstanding. Great so job. She Kudos also, to her. Also, uh, yeah, absolutely factors into the um, the nine uh, on this because um, they, they, they work hard and it's it's you have to have a personality mm-hmm. to do something like that. Uh, time after time after time, all night long. So, so I think when I retire from from work, I'm going to go down and I'm going to serve the kitchen sink at Disney. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I just don't see that happening, but but you, you know it's possible. <laughs> all right. So before we wrap up our beaches and cream review, we have a quick view. If you're watching us over on YouTube, um, here we go. Sink. It has eight scoops of ice cream, all the oh. toppings, and a whole can of whipped cream. A whole can. That's right, my friends from the Ramirez party said they're going to eat it all up. Give them a round of applause. A whole can. <laughs> Look at that. And yes, we did close it. (laughs) That girl in the back photobombed this. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> but I want to say real quick before we wrap it and looking at that, I, I wish I would have went around and took more pictures when I was taking pictures. There was still a lot of people there. They recently, uh, I think it was over the last two years or so. It was either right before or right after. I think it was right before the pandemic. They uh, refurbished um, beaches and cream and they did a great job. And it's, it, it is a classic looking soda shop. And, you know, like with the art, you saw it a couple pictures. They just did a great job. And it, it's just a really good vibe there. Absolutely. So, like we said, absolutely try it out if you're going to be there anytime soon. So, uh, yeah. Totally agree. So, we're going to work our way over towards the next part of the show, which uh, we were going to discuss um, our top five uh, DVC resorts. Um now, obviously, these are resorts that we've stayed at personally. Uh, some of them won't be on this because we haven't stayed there. So that, but we will give you the top five that we have stayed at. Um, Ken, do yeah. you want me to go first, you go or first. you want to? Okay, all right. So my my top five, uh, not a big surprise for number one, which is uh, Beach Club. Uh, number two is the Polynesian. Uh, number three is Saratoga Springs. Uh, Four is Old Key West. And uh, five is Boardwalk. Uh, Four and five could be really like a tie between Old Key West and Boardwalk. Um, The one that did not make my list um, that I have stayed at is Bay Lake Tower. Um, But that's the only other DVC resort. Uh, I have not yet stayed at uh, Grand Floridian or Wilderness Lodge. Um, so I'm hoping to eventually at some point. But uh, right now, like I said, my top five, I would go uh, the, the, my pros and cons. And uh, for Beach Club, uh, the number one pro uh, would be the proximity uh, to Epcot. Uh, the number two, and it's a close two, is the pool. Uh, some people would argue that probably the pool mm-hmm. is number one. Um, three is the Skyliner um, and the proximity to the Skyliner. 
Um, number four is um, a twofold. It's uh, having the Cape May Cafe and Beaches and Cream both on property. Uh, and lastly, the o- the overall resort atmosphere. I feel that that resort just has a really good uh, a vibe to it and a really good atmosphere. It makes you feel like you are going to a place where you are going home, basically, or you feel like that. Um, the the cons against it uh, for Beach Club, um, the self-parking mm-hmm. isn't the best. Um, it is It can be a long walk to your room. So that would be number two as a con. Uh, sometimes you, if your room is really far from the elevator, it could be, it could be a hall. Uh, number three, uh, there is no food court at Beach Club. Um, and number four is uh, the – similar to number three where it's – the gift shop is very small, and the gift shop actually serves as – your counter service slash mm-hmm. food court. So it's, it's like doubles as both. Uh, and five, which is really not, I, I kind of was trying to reach for a con cause there's really yeah. not a lot of cons against beach club, but uh, five is the size of the lobby. It is kind of a small lobby, so it can get really busy during mm-hmm. checkout and uh, check in and checkout times, depending on uh, when you go. Um, not a lot of seating in the lobby as well. So that that could be, you know, a detriment for some people. But overall, uh, that is my uh, top five uh, resorts. And we can delve into, uh, once Kenny gives you his, uh, some of the other ones that I have on my list. And we can talk about them and go back and forth. Because I know Kenny hasn't stayed at the Beach Club, but I know he's stayed at pretty much all the other ones I have mm-hmm. on my list. So we can discuss that. So. <clears throat> All right, my top five, one of them in, for DVC resorts, I've only stayed at four DVC resorts. Uh, and if you've listened to past episodes and I have a problem is that I, I have like FOMO, fear of missing out. So every time I go to stay at another resort that I haven't stayed at since I became a DVC member, I'm like, oh, I really wish I stayed there. I had a good time, but I really <laughs> wish I went, went back to, you know, so... I had to add one. One of them is going to be one that I am looking to stay at in the near future. Um, But I have visited. I have seen the rooms. Um, So my list, I I was very torn at first because I have a very – Saratoga is my home resort as a DVC member. Um, Saratoga is where I own all my points. And – well, most people, it doesn't matter where you buy your points because, you know, you owned Walt at Saratoga and Beach Club, but Beach Club is your is your number one. Correct. So I, when we talked about this earlier today about the top five, and, and I was torn because there's a couple on here that I love to go to. But at the end of the day, if you ask me on this list, where do you want to stay on your next Disney vacation? It's Saratoga. Saratoga, and I know I am in the minority. For anyone who's listening and anyone who comes across us in the future, I've said it, Walt, in past episodes, there is something about Saratoga that, like I said in the last episode, when you see the sign, Welcome Home at the Guard Shack, to me, like how Beach Club is to you, I feel like I'm home. That mm-hmm. is my second home. And I am relaxed and comfortable, and especially after the refurb at Saratoga. I, I absolutely love it. Um, so Saratoga, and I'll come back to Saratoga in a minute, some of the pros I like over there. So Saratoga is my number one. Yes, I'm in the minority. Uh, coming in at number two, probably no surprise, well, I'm wearing a shirt today, is uh, Disney's Boardwalk. Uh, coming in at number three on my list is the Polynesian. Coming in at number four, which was on your list again as well, is Old Key West. And the resort that I have not stayed at yet, and I toyed between two of them, uh, is Riviera. Uh, when we recently added on about a year and a half ago, 
we did toy with the idea for a while of buying at Riviera. 50-year contract. Well, it would have been 49. 49 years, um, brand new rooms, great location. You're directly connected to the Skyliner. Um, and after staying at Boardwalk several times, just like you do at Beach Club, Walt, you get addicted to that access to Epcot and Hollywood Studios. And I'm like, yeah, I'm Absolutely. like, well, I'll buy here, you know. And uh, and then I was thinking to myself, now that would put you, that would put you somewhere uh, in the you, 90s, you, <laughs> right? Like you'd be about 95. Well, you beat me to it. <laughs> so I was like, well, I, when we were talking about it, I was like, well, my daughter at least will inherit it. And I was like, because. If I am alive when the contract's expiring, someone's definitely going to be pushing me around. <laughs> I see you in a scooter, no doubt about it. <laughs> I was it. like, yeah, I was sitting there thinking to myself, I'm like, yeah, I would have been like 90 plus years old. So, yeah, I would have been in my 90s. But my, my daughter and you know, hopefully in the future grandkids would have enjoyed it. But at the end of the day, we decided to buy resale. Uh, don't regret it. Uh, but so, yeah, Old Key West at number four, Riviera at number five. Um my pros now go back to the go back to saratoga now you were saying that uh you, you give us if you have them give us your your pro your top pros for saratoga one thing i love about saratoga is the laid back atmosphere i also like that it's very it's it's the largest dvc resort on property and that's where it gets its knock because a lot of people i don't know why you do this stop inflicting pain rent a car we say it all the time. Stop inflicting pain. <laughs> but if if Absolutely. you have a car, whether you rent a car, whether you drive there from wherever you're living, it, it doesn't matter how big it is. You get in your car. I drive the artist palette in the morning. I enjoy a nice breakfast. And then we go about our day. Um, it's very laid back. It's not – you don't ever get that overrun feeling where, like you said, when you go into, uh, like, Beach Club at certain times during check-in, you, you get like that. Or, like, especially at the Polynesian, too, right now, you get, like, that bum rush and you feel almost overwhelmed because it, it, it wasn't really made for the capacity that we're operating at today. Um, you know, where Correct. Saratoga is always laid back. And now that they redid – they just finished earlier this year the – um the uh, main lobby at, at um, Saratoga. And it is beautiful, beautiful. It's elegant. Um, and I could always sit there and relax and grab a drink. And, you know, like I like to people watch and it's just never overrun. And you could relax there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of other resorts, depending on the time of day, like you said, well, it, it's the floodgates open and, uh, but yeah, I, I, and I know again, I picked Saratoga as number one. I'm in the minority. Um, I picked one of the top reasons, the one of the pros is how much it's spread out. I know I'm in the minority again because a lot of people complain about the busing, even the internal shuttle. You're, mm -hmm. you're waiting, depending on where you're staying, it, it could take you 20 minutes even after you enter the resort to get back to your room. Um, I love the landscaping. And I'll tell you, and I think I said it before, I was very hesitant because I was ready to buy Old Key West. And my wife and daughter did not. They wanted Saratoga. And one of the biggest reasons was because they're basically close to the same points per day and pricing. They're a little, they're, they're, they're comparable. Yes, they're very, they're very similar. similar. Yeah. And why I wanted Old Key West is I wanted to vacation somewhere that didn't look like home. And when you go to Old mm -hmm. Key West, the palm trees, you know, the, the, the more of a tropical feel. And that's what I was looking for. And, and when I looked at Saratoga and I go, wow, it kind of looks like the area which we live in, Walt. And I was like, well, I don't want to be reminded of where I live. You know, I'm on vacation. You know, I want to be immersed. You know, that's why we go to Disney. Um, but one of the big one of the big hangups for our family, especially my wife and kid, was they don't have a counter service where saratoga does so we ended up buying at saratoga and i fell in love with it i did i fell in love mm -hmm. with it i love the pool i love the paddock pool is my absolute favorite um and that's not the main pool but i love staying in the paddock i love the location of it the pool's great the food's good they even bring a you, you could go up you can order they'll bring the food to your poolside you know they just gotta have the flag hooked to your chair um how about the location uh 
close to yeah, Disney Springs. So like, yes, How my family and I were big Disney Springs people. We don't do a ton of shopping there, but we like the ambiance. We like to go there at night, grab a cup of coffee, grab Ghirardelli's, take a walk around. Um, and to us, th- that's a big plus. And that's why when we talked about last episode, we used to love, because all we had to do was walk over the bridge and we were at Wolfgang Puck Express. So th- mm-hmm. th- those are the main reasons. I don't really have a negative. And if you're a golfer, Lake Buena Vista Golf Course is attached to it. So another great yeah mm-hmm. so if you're a golfer Absolutely. it's another great resort to stay at um well i guess i guess you could say one of the knocks you mentioned earlier which was the that people do complain about yes. the distance and the size so, of the yeah resort. you could take that as a negative because if you are relying on disney transportation and for whatever reason we decided to jump on a bus <laughs> one time and we came back and i was like i don't know what we're doing we have a car what are we doing on the bus but we did and like you said, you got to come in and it was several stops and it's 20 minutes and that you just wanted yeah, to inflict I, some I, pain I, on I yourself. I wanted to remind myself of why <laughs> I rented a car. And the whole time as I'm standing there holding on to the strap, I'm going, I have a car. Why did I do this to myself? But um, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely it, it. It's spread out. And depending on how far you are away from the carriage house, which is the main the main building, um, you have a decent walk if you don't want to wait for the internal shuttle. So if you're relying on Disney transportation and you're staying at Saratoga Springs, you either want your best bet if you want to stay closest to the main uh, lobby where the food is, the main pool would be um, the Springs section. Um, but, yeah, that's about it. Now, correct Correct me if I'm wrong about this, but and because I know you've been there since I think you've been there since the refurb. The is last that time I stayed there in was the, in, in January. My January trip, we stayed there. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so the one another thing that you could kind of say as a knock against it would be uh, the size of the food court for the size of the resort. It is kind of a small Agreed. food court. Would you? I, I would totally you agree, agree with, that? with that. The one thing they did since COVID is that when you and I first started going, well, I got ahead of myself. When you and I first started going, they would only allow you to sit in artist palette. And if you go down the side, there's mm-hmm. a hallway there that would take you to the turf club, which is their table service at Saratoga. They wouldn't allow you to eat down there. They have like a little um, turf club bar and they had pool table. They removed the pool table yeah. since the refurb, but they had a pool table. There's a little lounge area. And then you had the the, the restaurant. They wouldn't allow you to eat down there since covid and it has continued because we did it in january you they have extended the dining into the grill and if it's really busy they have in the past let you go into um the turf club now that may have changed now that the turf club is now open and operational again so that may have changed but they do allow you to go down to the lobby area i'm sorry the bar area and you can eat as well so it's like it's like an overflow one other negative was the turf club bar, the turf club restaurant was not that good. And that was disappointing to have a restaurant at your resort that was not good. Now, I have not eaten there since they've refurbed it. Um, I heard they got a new chef. They have altered the menu. And I've heard a lot of good reviews on social media since it's reopening several months ago. So. When I plan my next trip, I don't have a date yet. I'm trying. Um, <laughs> I definitely want to try and get in there and check it out and see what uh, see what everybody's talking about. But, yeah, the biggest knock on Saratoga, okay. if you're going to stay there, if you were relying on Disney transportation, that that's a negative. Yeah, which I don't know why you would do that in the first place, but like you said, that – I, I don't- that makes so no sense. So I'll go real quick. I, I don't want to bog us down. Boardwalk, we talked about it uh, pre-show. There's not much. Uh, Boardwalk does not have a uh, counter service either. Uh, they will once um, the Boardwalk Bakery is refurbished into a sandwich shop. But in our most recent trip, we were so far away from the elevator that it was a long, and I even did a, a a post on Instagram, a video on our Instagram page of how long it was to the elevator. So if you had a couple too many, 
you may get lost and not find your room <laughs> in places of the boardwalk. Yeah, so um, that's definitely a knock there. Um, them not having counter service is a knock at boardwalk. But like you said, the pros is, is no different from Beach Club. Um, the access to Epcot and the access to the Skyliner and, and studios is great. It's terrific. And they are the two resorts. Uh, two, two resorts. They are the two parks that I like to visit the most. So that location mm -hmm. is, is perfect for our family. Now, and, and there, there's a lot of variety also mm -hmm. there as far as uh, places to eat. Uh, you have the flying yep. fish there. Uh, you have the bakery. Uh, there, I believe, is a, a takeout pizza place there as well. Uh, and that is, I think, the future location for a new restaurant. Yes, correct? For, yes, where the correct. ESPN yep. zone used to be. That will be a future sit down restaurant. Um, so we both have Polly on our list too, Walt. Pros mm -hmm. and cons for you for Polly. Uh, well, pros for me obviously is the app, the atmosphere of the resort. Um, you do feel as soon as you walk in um, that you are, you know, uh, on an island somewhere or in somewhere, you know, where you you, you feel you 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 get the atmosphere and the vibe of the Polynesian almost immediately. Uh, the location, the proximity, it's in the, on the monorail loop proximity to magic kingdom. Uh, the, the pool is not the best pool on property, but it's definitely a pretty good pool. Uh, I would put it in my top four or five uh, on the, on the entire property. Um the the restaurants in the resort, uh, Captain Cook's, Kona Cafe, uh, you do have a pretty good selection there. Uh, the one knock I would say against the Polynesian is um, the parking mm -hmm. is not the greatest. So for those of us who uh, don't use the bus system, <laughs> uh, parking there can be a little bit difficult. Um, the other thing also, as Kenny mentioned earlier, is the, um, the, the lobby can get a little bit busy. It is a little bit congested, mm -hmm. uh, and in the future it might get worse with the additions that they're talking about. Uh, so that could kind of take away from the atmosphere uh, of, of the Polynesian. Uh, but beyond that, I really can't think of too many other knocks against I agree it. with you. The, uh, the, the main pool is not bad, but it seems to be congested most of the time. Um, the quiet mm -hmm. pool isn't bad over towards the DVC side. It, it's funny because the one time we'll, we'll talk about split stays in future episodes, we did a split stay. And for some of you who don't know that, it's when you're on vacation, part of your stay is at one resort, and Disney makes it very easy. And then, say, the second part of your stay you would then switch resorts. So I stayed at Saratoga for a part of my stay and ended over at the Polynesian. We actually drove back and went to the pool at the Polynesian because both pools at the Poly were overrun. You know, just a lot of kids, mm. a lot of people. Um, and my parents were staying because that's one of the trips they came with us. They stayed at Saratoga for the whole trip. So we went back over with them and, and used the pools over there. So... Yeah, the pools aren't that big, so to, to me, that's a knock. Um, the parking, like you said, is a knock if you're, you know, people who rent cars like us, because depending on where they put you, you could have a long walk to your room at night. Um, one of the other knocks, and it's going to change with the tower in the future, is that, yes, they are the largest studios on property, but that's all you can get right now unless you're either going to, Empty out your DVC bank with points a night for the bungalows, which is a two bedroom, or you're going to drop a couple thousand dollars a night to stay in one of those bungalows. And I have not been in either, but I have seen numerous videos of people who stayed at the bungalows at the Polynesian and the cabins over at Fort, uh, excuse me, at Wilderness Lodge and the cabins below 
them away. Um, so if you're going down with two people or you're doing a solo trip, then the poly's just fine. But I've also done mm-hmm. a trip on the poly with, with, with people packed in there, and it's not, you know, you're on top of one another. So that is the drawback with the Polynesian is that it's studios only. Um, one of the, the, the biggest perk, though, the pro, is you're on the monorail loop. You know, you're a stone throw away from Magic Kingdom. And one of the best views for fireworks at night. I, I got to say, well, and maybe once I find a picture, I have a small video up. I think it's on my computer. From the last time I stayed at the Polynesian, we had a third floor park view. And, and I got mm-hmm. to watch um, um, Happily Ever After from my from my balcony. Um, what was really cool, though, is we had the curtains open. We we're on the third floor. I wake up in the middle of the night, and I get up out of bed, and you see everything lit up, like Space Mountain, the castle. It, it was just... What a view. What a view. Yes, yeah, that the was the best is, view is I've ever had tremendous. at Disney. Um, so the view is there. And I tell you one thing, and I know this might sound a little corny. When you're in the main lobby and you look straight out towards Magic Kingdom and you could see, you know, a part of the castle, there's just something like – that's what Disney's all about. It's like a teaser. It's showing you that there's something out there that you want to go to. Mm-hmm. And, and thinking of that and, and how they built it and the positioning, it, yeah, Absolutely. it's just really cool. I, I I'm gonna say the pol- have, have you had an opportunity? Have you had an opportunity to eat at either the Kona Cafe or um, at? I've Captain eaten Cooks? at the Kona Cafe. I like the Kona Cafe. Uh, it's not my type of food, so I've had a burger and that there. It's mm-hmm. not bad. But now my wife and daughter love it. They love the Kona Cafe. So I take it. I don't have a lot to choose from there. But it's Mm -hmm. good. Never had a bad meal. Like they said, they love it. I like how it's open and, you know, it's open to the the main lobby on the second floor. Um, I've also, I eat at Captain Cook's all the time, even if I'm not staying at the Polynesian I will drive there to have lunch or I will jump on the monorail to go to Captain Cook's because I think it's arguably the best counter service on property. Um, I was just about to say that I agree. The only knock against it is it's even tinier than anybody else's uh, uh, quick service. So uh, we've mentioned how small some of these other ones are and Captain Cook's is even smaller, uh, but the quality of it makes up for the size of the location. Agreed. Now, Walt, I don't know if you checked it out yet, but if if you when they built Riviera, go to Primo Piatto, which is their counter service at Riviera. It's like the same size, if not smaller. That's where I was shocked. Yeah, wow. it, it's it, okay. it's tiny. It, it, it's really tiny there, and it, and it kind of sort of reminds you of. Okay, it's not the same theme, so people don't freak out. But, like, the way it's mm-hmm. kind of laid out a little bit and, and how small it is, I'm like, you think they would have learned from years ago. Because it is really small, but I do enjoy yeah, Primo absolutely. Piata, though. Um, but it, yeah, I'll have yeah. to give that a shot on yes. my next trip. Um, let's see, for Old Key West, that was the first. Yeah, we had yes. a tie there with – we had a tie with Old Key West at number but four. But I'll go real quick. That was the first DVC resort I stayed at with you guys. Mm-hmm. Love the size of the rooms. You'll never see a DVC resort or a Disney resort again with those type of room sizes. Uh, it was a two-bedroom. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that won't, won't happen, happen anymore. anymore. Um, they were recently refurbished. Um, now, my knock, my family stayed at Old Key West right after the refurb. They stayed in a studio. I personally do not like studios with two beds. It was two beds only, and so and there was no couch. So, you know, during the day, if you want to come back to the room, watch TV, relax, I'm not big on laying in bed. So I, I like the couch or whatever. So the, the studios are a knock for me. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. So I will not stay at Old Key West unless it was an absolute, like, last resort in a studio. 
because I like to have the couch. I like to have a little bit of that room. Um, but the refurbishment, otherwise, like in the one and two bedrooms, beautiful job. Like I said, and it's huge, huge. So now negative, you know, no full no court. court. Um, you know, Olivia's cafe is yes, average at average. best. I, I have eaten there several times. I'm not going to destroy it, but like Walt said, it's average. And that's not big either. So if Old Key West is busy, try getting breakfast in there sometimes because people, that's the only place to go eat. Um, but yeah, I, and you know what? There's really nothing because, yes, you could walk over to two. I've never done it. But there's the walkway. I think you can walk over to Old Key West. I mean, from Old Key West to Saratoga, I think it goes through the golf course. Uh, yeah, but I mean, yeah. so, to go anywhere, you have to get in a car. At least with Saratoga, you can, you know, you have the, you know, your access to Disney Springs. Uh, but however, Old Key West, the whole feel of the resort, love it. It's very relaxing. You know, plus, got to pay homage to it. It's the OG of DVC. Yeah, and the the main pool is is a pretty mm-hmm. good pool. Agreed. Um, and you can't do this anymore. Uh, but it, when I first started going, uh, you could actually rent a pontoon boat and take the pontoon boat out into um all the way out to Disney. Oh to wow, Disney Springs to the to to yeah. So that was that was a lot of fun. Uh, I think it was like about fifty bucks mm-hmm. per hour. Uh, so you, you could get back within the hour if you took your time and you went out and got a nice view of, of Disney Springs and came back. So that was, that was fun. Can't no. do that anymore. So no. that, that went away. That actually went away before COVID, mm-hmm. I believe. I don't know if there were issues with, um, liability. I never witnessed any, you know, accidents or any issues, but, um, I have a feeling that's probably the reason why they, they did away with that. So, and then rounding it up is Riviera. Now, like I said to everybody, I have never stayed at Riviera, but my wife and I like to go there and hang out. Um, we go to the coffee, sh- the coffee shop in the lobby. Was that Le Petit Cafe? I think I said that right. Uh, yeah. Very, very uh, good. You know, <laughs> get a good cup of coffee. The, the desserts are average. Um, like I said, Disney cupcakes, they look a lot better than they taste. They're Instagram worthy. Um, you know, check out. We always like to check out the, the, the um, you know, for memorabilia. Not memorabilia. The souvenir. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Souvenirs. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, just hang out there. <laughs> Another thing I'm a little shocked though with Riviera is I remember when they were building it, they were going to call it the Grand Floridian of Epcot. You know, it was going to be for the Epcot resorts. It was going to be the Grand Floridian. You know, and like I said, Primo Piatto is small if not smaller than Captain Cook's, the main lobby, even though I like it and I enjoy sitting in it and relaxing and having a cup of coffee, it's small. It's small. I, I It's – and I know, granted, like you said, you don't hang out in the lobby, but even pre-COVID, it was open shortly before COVID, so it was built before the COVID era. There's only one desk right. that the, the check well, in Walt. I mean, like, so if you have a, I understand it's only one building, yeah. but you're going to have an influx of people there while they're trying to get you now to do mobile check in. So, I, I, you know, my feeling about Riviera. I think Riviera is the misfit of the DVC resorts because it doesn't fit where Agreed. they built it. It, it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, nice uh, resort uh, hotel that should have been built somewhere where they, you could have taken advantage of, of what it's about and have a theme to it. Instead, you drop it on a piece of land that is right next Caribbean to beach. basically, which was a, which it, it actually was mm-hmm. the yes, Caribbean it was. beach. It was a, an extra, it was an extra piece of property there. And they decided let's make the Caribbean beach a little smaller and just build the Riviera here. And that's what they did. So I, I agree with you. I think it's it's um, it's a lot of the things in that resort, and I haven't stayed there in the room, so I can't speak on the rooms, but I just feel like the resort is too small for the parcel of land that they mm-hmm. put it on. It, it, it deserved a bigger space. Agreed. Now, the reason why I say it's in my top five, I 
I have seen some of, some of the rooms. I toured one of the demo rooms when I was looking to add on. Um, very, very nice. And it's kind of like mm-hmm. our style at home. So uh, it, it, it has a place with me. Um, like I said, but I mm-hmm. totally agree with you. One, they put it in the wrong spot. Um, you know, with line of sight, you're, you're looking at Caribbean beach. It, do, it does. It doesn't match. Correct. It doesn't jive with the whole theming, but that's out the door. Um, and I don't like that. It's only one building. Uh, like you said, it was, it was a parcel of Caribbean beach because for anyone listening who doesn't know the entrance to Riviera was the original entrance to Caribbean beach. And when you would pull through there, your check-in was off to the left for Caribbean beach. And that is now all part Mm of Riviera, but the inside of the resort, the, the ambiance, the, the design and all that really jives with us. So that's what makes Mm -hmm. me want to stay there. And I love the Skyliner access as well. I love that it's also brand new. Um, but I will tell you, Primo Piatto is, I, I like it as a counter service. So you should definitely try mm-hmm. it out the next time you go. And I would also say I've eaten at, to- not on this particular last trip, but I have eaten in previous trips uh, at Topolino's. And uh, I will say that Topolino's is a pretty good restaurant. It's, um, uh, you know, not going to be in my top three or four but it's definitely a very good restaurant uh great oh, view great from view. the roof uh up there especially mm-hmm. at night uh actually it's a better view at night than it is the day. during the day because you don't see caribbean beach mm-hmm. as much and uh you kind of can really it, it 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 just it's a sharp um view from that from that rooftop um uh, but I agree. I think overall, I think, um, you know, you ranking it at number five is pretty fair. I, I don't think if it had been somewhere else where the size of the resort were different, you, it might crack maybe mm-hmm. your top three. I don't know if you would yes. agree with that, but right now I, I think that's a, that's I a agree. good place for it. Um, so uh, I think right now uh, we can – Kind of wrap yep. that up. Uh, I think that's our top five. So, go ahead. Uh, we're going to talk about the things that we miss. Uh, I don't remember if we did this on the last episode. No. I don't think we did. Uh, but we're going to go back to our tradition of things we miss. Um, so, for me, uh, I miss the music at Epcot, at the entrance of Epcot. And I also miss the water fountains that were located just behind uh, Spaceship Earth, uh, right opposite, I believe, where the uh, Mm -hmm. Coca-Cola store is there. Um, For me, that was something that I always look forward to, especially at the end of the night. If we were coming back from dinner and walking towards the front of the park, um, you'd always stop and and take a look at that view of, of the fountains with the music, with the, uh, with, with spaceship earth behind it. And it was, um, it was a really, really, it kind of, it gave you that Disney feel, the Disney Mm -hmm. vibe that you're talking about earlier. Um, and the music is just one of those, it was one of those tunes that gets stuck in Mm -hmm. your head and that as soon as you hear it, it brings you right back to Epcot. It brings you back. It floods all of the memories of vacations flood in. And it was, it just made you feel good. Um, that mm-hmm. went away. So now you have a generic, some generic uh, song that they play and they did away with the fountain now because of, I believe it's because of Guardians of the Galaxy, I would imagine. Uh, no, that's what they're building it with the Moana and all that that's getting done up there. Yep. Oh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So that that went away, but um, that's something something that I definitely miss um, at Epcot. So something that I will miss, because depending on what resort you stay at, is your traditional resort TV. So 
when you check into your resort, whether you're staying at Order of Animation, All Stars, whatever, Saratoga, when you turn on the TV, you know, you either got the channel that shows you your park times, what's going on in the park, and it has that great Disney music in the background. And I think most of us will agree that we kind of, uh, you know, it stays on most of the time in our rooms. And when I stayed at Coronado Springs right before the pandemic, once we checked into the room, you know, it, it was completely different. It had our names up there, like, welcome to, you know, welcome, blah, 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 family. And mm-hmm. I was like, what's this? So I start clicking through and it's completely different than the traditional resort TV that we all know and love. Now I know a lot of you is out there and I, and I do it too. Uh, big YouTubers, resort TV one, um, you know, you could go on there and a lot of people like to, and I do the same thing, pull it up on our computer. If you're having a bad day or you just want to relax, you're missing Disney and they have recordings from the past. You know, past days they've stayed in the room mm-hmm. and it's got the music and the park, you know, and it ships. It goes from Magic Kingdom to Epcot to Hollywood Studios and then, you know, so on and so on. That's all being eliminated. And I know now it's been, what is it, Coronado Springs, Riviera. Uh, it's changed because you had it new. You had the new version in Beach Club. It's yep, in Yacht Club. Beach Club was new, yep. Uh, I think it's also, it might be in Grand Floridian already too. I I think it is because I just saw somebody post about it on Facebook yesterday. So that is one thing I'm going to miss because what I found myself doing is like looking for that, you know, what the park's going by and the information and that music. And it wasn't there. You know, they had it, they had a different Mm -hmm. version of it. Um, and I know we're all Disney people and we don't like change. Some of the change is good. I, I personally, that's what I missed because, I, you know, even when you're driving through the resorts, you see almost every room, if they have the window open, has the resort TV on. Mm-hmm. And that sound and that. And that Epcot song would be yes. playing in that in some yes. of those. So <laughs> I, I it has not reached Saratoga yet, which I'm shocked since they just got refurbished. It has not reached Boardwalk yet. Um, but I have, you know, it, it's coming, it's all going to be, you know, mm-hmm. the, the, the resort TV that we all know and love will eventually all be gone. And as of everything else, it'll be a thing in the past. So enjoy it while you can on your next Disney stay. So that is what I miss yeah. or I'm going to miss. So we're going to, we're going to wrap up today, but uh, just a real quick, uh, aside, uh, I will, be heading back down to uh, Disney uh, Father's Day weekend, um, and I'll be staying at Pop Century. Um, so we'll be doing a review uh, on that, and um, we'll, we'll keep you informed on uh, on my yes. Adventures. We will be following Walter uh, because I am not <laughs> I am not allowed to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But yeah, so uh, we can't wait, Walt, to follow you for those couple of days, and uh, you know, I know everyone else can't either. So we look forward to it, and, and in future episodes leading up to it. Now we have to do the buildup of what restaurants you're going to book and and what you're planning on doing. So we're excited for you. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll okay. do that on the next show. So I think a good place to wrap up, Walt. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Always it was fun. a lot of fun. Always fun as always. So, folks. And we may be losing our internet connection soon. There's a thunderstorm roll, so we got we got to go. (laughs) (laughs) All right, folks, that's going to do it for this edition of the Disney Resorts Podcast. For Walt Ramirez, I'm Kenny Hayes. Take care, everybody.